Hello, in this video things get interesting as we're going to be dealing with forces at an angle and problems where the whole thing is at an angle, where we're on inclined planes. So we're going to dust off the trig, the Sokotoa, and talk about how to deal with angles in your force problems. Alright, here we go. So let's look at a problem where we have the good old box sitting on the floor, the force due to gravity, the normal force are balanced, things are good, we're happy, but then we're going to come along and apply a force at an angle let's call it 30 degrees just for the sake of argument. What's gonna happen here is I will pull the box over to the right, a friction force will act, and now I have a lot of stuff going on. Um, this creates some problems because what I wanna do with any net force problem is sum all my forces horizontally, do a net force in X, sum all my forces vertically, do a net force in Y. But when I look at this force, it's neither of those things. It's not, it's a little bit horizontal and it's a little bit vertical. So there's no clean way for me to deal with this. I can't do a net force in X or a net force in Y while I have this here because it's not either. I need a way to deal with that. Luckily we have one, so we'll talk about that. What I can do is I can resolve an angled force into what we call component vectors, uh, vertical and horizontal component vectors. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create two equivalent vectors in X and Y that add up to be the same thing as the angled force. And that takes a little bit of vector math, which is a right triangle. I'm gonna call these F sub X and F sub Y, the X component of the force F and the Y component of the force F. And this is what they're gonna look like. I draw force F like this at an angle the X component has the same width. It comes out to be the same X dimension as my force. And the Y component has the same Y dimension. It's the same height. So I'm creating a right triangle with the right angle right here. There's a few things I can do with this, uh, but this is vector math. So this is how vectors add together. The way we look at this is that F sub X plus F sub Y equals F as vectors. Uh, that doesn't work out with pure arithmetic. If I had, let's say this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, 3 plus 4 doesn't equal 5, but when I deal with uh, right triangles like this, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So I, when I'm dealing with vector math, I have to do stuff like maybe use Pythagorean theorem. So on a problem, it's going to look like this. Now, this is the applied force, so I'm going to call this the X applied force and the Y applied force, so FAX and FAY. What I'm doing when I draw this is I'm replacing the applied force vector with these two other vectors. Uh, and believe it or not, these two are equivalent to the applied force. Um, so for example, if I have a force of five newtons up and to the right, let's say F is five newtons up and to the right, I could have a a triangle workout where that's the same thing as a force of four newtons to the right and a force of three newtons up. If you applied a force of four newtons to the right and three newtons up to an object, then you took that same object and applied a force of five newtons at the right angle, it would act identical. The results would be identical. Um, the, to the book, it would be no difference. Those two forces versus this one force. So we make our lives much easier by splitting this applied force into these components. And now I can deal with it because I'm getting rid of the applied force and I'm only going to have FAX, FAY, the normal force, the force of gravity, and the force of friction. And all of those are either horizontal or vertical. So to deal with that, we will need to do some trig uh, because we don't know the size of the applied force. Maybe that's what we're trying to find. But if I know the angle, which is typically what we'll have, if I know the angle in like one side, I can find the other side. So almost always you're gonna deal with these problems with trig. So you wanna remember so katoa. You wanna remember the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So in other words, the Y component of the applied force is the applied force times the sine of the angle. And I can do the same thing with my X components and this is adjacent to the angle. I'm gonna use cosine and I'll find that the X component of the applied force is the applied force times the cosine of the angle. These aren't in the data booklet, but they come up a lot. Uh, 
many times when you're splitting an angled force into components, you're going to do it like this. There is even a reference in the front of the data booklet with some generic force called vector called A, and it breaks it into AH for horizontal and AV for vertical using sines and cosines. So you can use that uh, data booklet as a reference triangle. Um, if you, uh, if Sokotoa gives you issues, but you definitely want to be comfortable with uh, using trig to find these. All right, uh, so an example problem that we can do with this to show how this will work out is here's a couple numbers for this problem and we can try and find the normal force and then find the friction force if I want to move at a constant speed. So here's how this will break out now. Now that I've broken these into components, I have three vertical forces. I have my normal force, my force of gravity, and I have the Y component of my applied force. Those are the three vertical forces. So I'm gonna sum those. These two are pointing up, force of gravity is pointing down. There we go. I know that's equal to MA because that's the sum of all the forces. And I know the acceleration of Y is zero because the box is not lifting up off the floor or burrowing into the floor, it's moving horizontally, which means there's no vertical acceleration. Uh, moving a couple steps here, one thing I can see that's interesting, I can solve for the normal force because that's what I want to find. And again, before I plug in any numbers, I want to think about this. The normal force is equal to the force of gravity minus the Y component of the applied force. So this is a case where the normal force is not equal to the force of gravity it's less than the force of gravity. So if we think about what this math is telling me, it'll tell me something about the normal force. The normal force is smaller than the force of gravity by the amount that I pull up on it because I'm kind of helping the normal force here. It doesn't have to react as much to the force of gravity if I am pulling upwards with my applied force. So I get to take that away so the normal force will be less than the force of gravity. All right, which means I would have to go back to my original FPD and change the length of this vector because we originally maybe assumed that they were the same length, but whenever there's an angle, that's not going to be true. And of course, going from here, I can take it a step further and plug in the values and get the answer, which is 510 newtons. But of course, this, the general solution, is the most important part. And for FAY, we use the trig that we've already done. The Y component of the applied force is the applied force times the sine of the angle. So we can see uh, this is going to be less than 444. It's only some small component of it. All right, then the next part, if I want to find the coefficient of dynamic friction, then I'm dealing with horizontal. So let's look at the horizontal case. Uh, same thing now, I have two horizontal forces, FAX and FF. FAX is to the right, FF is to the left, so they look like this. I set it equal to MA. Um, I am going to break these out, so I use my trigonometry to see that the X component was equal to the applied force times the cosine of the angle, like we did on the previous slide. And we use my definition of the uh, dynamic force of friction. It's the coefficient of dynamic friction times the normal force. Uh, solving here, just doing some algebra to isolate for the coefficient of dynamic friction, and then remembering that the acceleration is zero if I move at constant speed. And again, I can work it out to a number of the general cases, the important part, but there is an example, 0.75 would be the coefficient here. All right, now one more uh, exciting case that can happen is not just one force on an angle, but I put the problem on an angle. So I have a box, of course, sliding down a ramp now, uh, or a box on a ramp. We can look at why this is a pain, because if I want to talk about the forces acting on the box in my traditional coordinate system here, uh, well, the weight acts straight down. The weight always acts down towards the center of the Earth. So the weight will be straight vertically down, but I have other forces. I have a normal force, and the normal force is perpendicular to the surface, which means the normal force goes like this. It doesn't go straight vertically up. It kind of matches the angle of this ramp here in a way. And as the block slides down the ramp, there's a force of friction 
opposite the motion, so this is also at an angle, and it's accelerating down the ramp in this direction, also at an angle. So I have multiple forces at angles, and even worse, my acceleration is at an angle, and this is the part that's really hard to deal with, is if your acceleration is at an angle to your coordinate system. So that's really, really hard to deal with. You would be doing Sokotoa for days. It would be much, much easier if we just twisted things. And we just said, eh, let's make the coordinate system look like this. A totally legal move. The coordinate system, some guy just came up with it and said, this way is horizontal, this way is vertical. There's no reason we can't orient this coordinate system in any way that we want to make the math easy for us. General rule of thumb, try and choose a coordinate system where your acceleration is in line with one of your axes. So we want to make the x-axis like this. My acceleration is on axis then. Force of friction is on axis. Normal force is on axis. The only angled force I have now is the weight. So this is much easier to deal with. So we can use a tilted coordinate system to deal with an inclined plane. So choose the angle of the coordinate system so that it matches the acceleration. Then the weight or the force of gravity is the only thing we're going to need to break into components. So let's look at how that works. This is how those components are going to break out. And this is a little weird uh, at first. It takes some getting used to. But it's the same idea. I want to see how much of this weight vector is this way into the ramp. Sometimes we're going to call this the perpendicular component of the weight. It's the component of the weight vector that is perpendicular to the ramp. So I go down along this coordinate until I am even with the tip of the weight vector and then my x component comes from here outwards and the x component is parallel to the ramp and to the x uh, coordinate. So my right angle is here. That's really important. The right angle is between the wy and the wx. A lot of students draw it over here. That would be wrong. All right, the, the right angle is here. That's where the right angle is on an uh, inclined plane problem. And the other thing that we need to know, and you can kind of take my word for this, there uh, is material out there to show you where this comes from. If you uh, would like some justification, like a big proof with something like similar triangles, you can see if you buy it. But this angle and this angle are the same. So this is the angle of the ramp. The angle of inclination is the angle between these vectors here. You just kind of want to memorize that, I would say. You're going to see this a lot. That means I can do some trig. Notice it's going to work out a little differently now because the angle's in a different place as it was in the angled force problems. So always think about your Sokotoa. Now the sign of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Now the opposite is WX. That's WX over W. And I can solve for WX. Uh, I'm putting this both ways because you'll see it both ways. WX, because we can still call this X, um, or W parallel. Uh, sometimes you'll see this written as parallel and perpendicular, as in parallel to the ramp and perpendicular to the ramp. So I can also think of this as the component of weight parallel to the ramp. And it's equal to the weight of the object times the sine of the angle of the ramp, because that's the same angle up here. I can do the same thing for WY, or W perpendicular, we'll call it. There's my perpendicular symbol. Since that's adjacent to the angle, I'm going to use cosine, is adjacent over hypotenuse. I'm going to solve for the component I care about, and there we go, W cosine of the angle. This will be, always be the case on an inclined plane. It's maybe worth memorizing, but make sure you understand where it comes from so that you can uh, deal with it. And who knows, maybe they'll be really mean and give you the wrong angle or something. All right, so if I just want to look at how some of these forces are related to each other, I could, I'll still do the net force equations now. But now I'm doing the net force equation in X. We could also call the net force equation parallel to the ramp. So the net forces in this direction along the ramp would be the force of friction up the ramp and the parallel component of weight down the ramp. Substituting in the uh, equation for the force of friction and what I know about the parallel component now, I get this. 
And I can do the same thing for my perpendicular components. Now, of course, depending on what you need, with some masses and accelerations, you can solve for anything just like we did the previous problems. But that's a basic idea. The most important thing is being able to draw this right triangle and resolve these into their, uh, and resolve the weight into its two components so that you can set up some net force equations on a ramp. And of course, you know that we're gonna deal with problems where we're like applying forces up or down the ramp and all kinds of other crazy things. But this is the kind of basis of how these problems will work. Uh, so dealing with trig to break vectors into components and tilting the coordinate system when you need to to make your life easy uh, is how you will how you will get rolling with those. Um, so that is inclined planes. Have fun.